Here. Yeah, I was, I was, I was born in Miami, raised in Argentina, and then I went to school in North Florida. I went to school at the University of Florida in Gainesville, and then I've been in Los Angeles for a year and a half now. Um, I'm a writer, director, producer, filmmaker, and actress, of course, and stand-up comedian. Stand-up comedy has kind of taken over my life over the past year, and recently also I've been very involved with Latinas Acting Up, um, which is the group of Latinas that were on the picket lines every Friday during the SAG strike. And it's led by Diana Maria Riva and Lisa Vidal. And I was talking to my friend Yubisela about how it's so beautiful to see each other in person, all the hermanas and primas Latinas on the on the front lines of the pickets uh, once a week, but that we needed another way to connect and, and stay in touch and really support each other and show up for each other. So um, I encouraged uh, her, like, we need to make a group chat. So we made a group chat and we started adding other Latina actresses, Latina comedians, Latina directors, writers, filmmakers, Latinas in entertainment who want to show up and support each other. And then it just started growing. It's, I think, over like 150 or 200 members in that group chat now. And so you got added to the chat. Yes, yes. That's how, that's how we connected. That's how we met. It's a full circle story. And I said, I need stand-up comedians. Bring them on. <laughs> yes. And that's how I got you. So you started doing comedy 2019, right? Yes. So... You were- you were always naturally creative? I was always naturally creative. Yeah, I was always a writer. I was, I've was i been a writer my whole life. I was writing poems at seven. I like loved writing. That's kind of where the birthplace of all my other art comes mm-hmm. from is I'm a writer first. And then in college, I studied theater, performance. I studied film production and television production. Um, I also studied business for my master's degree. So I really wanted to get like an show business all around um, education. But in 2019, late 2019, I took a comedy class. It was a course uh, that taught me like improv and sketch comedy and stand-up comedy specifically. So those were the first two sets that I wrote, my five minute, my two two separate five minute sets I wrote in late 2019. And I performed them um, like in a show. Like that was my first, those were my first couple shows uh, late 2019. And I loved it. I didn't really think about stand-up comedy before taking that class. It was just another class that I wanted to take to become like a better actor, a better writer. And I was obsessed. And I I would have continued doing it in college if it weren't for the pandemic. So pandemic hit 2020 and there were no more live shows, no more live performances. I did perform some Zoom shows. Mm -hmm. I I did some of the Zoom shows, Zoom comedy um, it was very challenging. It's very difficult. You don't have the same connection that you do in a live live performance. So I still so I kept writing comedic sketches. And so I wrote and I directed a few comedic sketches, comedic so- shorts throughout college. Um, even though it was pandemic, like my major was one of the few majors at the university that was in person because you simply could not film and collaborate with your peers if you weren't physically in person so with masks and with testing and everything like I went through all of that for my film school education oh but they were doing that in the school in Florida at U of F yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so like uh, early 2020 was shut down like everyone was home but then right. by late 2020 we were back we were back in person uh-huh. um most most majors were still like fully online the uh-huh. courses but my major was one of the very few ones that like physically needed to be in person in order to to film and to collaborate you could not you need a team it's a very yeah. collaborative uh, very collaborative um workspace so but the comedy was still there even though I wasn't able to perform stand-up live I was still honing in like my comedic writing skills and you know even with like a uh, comedic directing and editing and acting like all of that was still being nurtured and so I then um by my last semester in college I was lucky enough to intern in a writer's room in a comedy. Oh. Yeah, I interned in an animated comedy writer's room. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I was working for Christy Stratton, who's another alumni from UF. Uh, mm-hmm. So she was she was a woman TV writer, showrunner for this comedic animated TV show. And I was so lucky to be in the writer's room because, again, r- writing comedy is like what I wanted to do, what I, what I was focused on. So I was taking notes in the writer's room and I was doing research for them. Like it was just a master class for me to see like what it's like to take a, a pilot and develop that into a season and one act, two act, three act, character development, character arc, storyline. It was 
uh, such a such a great experience. And so the reason I moved to Los Angeles was to work for this woman. So once I once I graduated, she told me like, if you move out to LA, like I'll hire you to be my assistant. Like come out, you know, you you want to write comedy, come out here. And I did. I moved out here May 2022. Mm -hmm. And even then, you could already feel the effects of the oncoming strike. So even then, mm -hmm. my boss told me like look, you're just going to have to find another job. Meanwhile, because I don't have work right now, like nobody has work right now. And so that's when I kind of started thinking about like, OK, I'll, I can be a production assistant on set, which I did that for six months. I was working mm -hmm. as a production assistant, you know, because I studied film and I was like, OK, time to apply what I learned in school out in Hollywood, really. Um, but after six months of doing that, I just realized like this is not my in, like this is not going to break me in. And my yeah. boss still doesn't have work. And so I'm still and not going to. PAs are a lot of work. Oh, PAs. You take the abuse. Oh my God. You got to respect <laughs> your PAs. Treat yeah. your PAs nicely because PAs yeah. go. The, Hollywood runs on their PAs and on the assistance of the agencies. Right. Truly, really, they're like. But but the thing, when I was in LA, man, some yeah. of those PAs, if they got in like through a family member or something, mm. it went to their head. The oh. nepotism is real in oh, LA versus so I noticed like a difference. The one good thing I noticed about New York versus LA, yeah. And New York, the PAs are nicer. In yeah, LA, the nepotism is real. It's present. Yeah. And yeah. I had I had my fair share of encounters with like yeah. different types of PAs. You could tell where a PA comes from. Like yeah. I had to network the hell out of my network to yeah. find the first PA job like I I so many LinkedIn messages and so many coffee chats and so many telling everybody that I knew like please whoever hears of a PA job give it to me yeah. um until I finally got the first one and then you have to do exceptionally well at that first oh yeah job, oh yeah then get recommended for the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one so I was on that house I was on the grind and I loved it and I learned a lot but then I really wanted to get back to writing so it's like, how do I get back to writing if there's no going to be there's not going to be any writer's rooms anytime soon this is now mm -hmm. January of this year January 2023 I kind of had to like step back and realize like okay this PA route is not really like going to open doors for me no one's going to discover me here no one's going to say like hey do you want to come meet the executive producer like it's just not happening for me that way right. so I decided to bring back stand-up comedy I was like I need to become a comedian like if I want to write jokes if I want to write comedy then I need to really get back into stand-up comedy and hopefully find my way into a writer's room that way. So that's when out here in LA, my first uh, stand-up open mic was February 14th on Valentine's Day. Literally, it was so funny. I talked about mm -hmm. my ex. It was so healing for everybody involved. And then I had my first, after five open mics, I did my first show. And then from there, I was just like, Every weeknight, I was focused on stand-up comedy. I had a random day job, remote, social media, whatever it was, so that I could just dedicate to stand-up every single night. Right. Um, I couldn't be on set. I had to let that go. I couldn't work for, like, corporate or anything. I was like, no, I just need to focus on stand-up comedy. So now I've been performing in L.A. for 10 months. And I, I've, it's crazy to think that in just the 10 months that I've been doing it every single weeknight, I performed at the Laugh Factory. I performed at the Ice House. I performed at the coffee store. Um, and I just, I have shows every week. Sometimes this show, this week, I have four shows this week. Um, oh, even visiting back home in Miami, I do shows in Miami now when I'm there. Uh -huh. So I'm officially by coastal. But my hope is that now that the strike is over, hopefully I can get back into sneaking my way into the writer's room again. We'll see. I have, I have right, hope right, 2024. Right. We'll see where this goes. 